as you mentioned, the women's uh, ratings are just shattering records. What role did Tennessee history play in building up the sport to where it is now? Also, John saying the women's game was at 3.30 on Sunday, and we had John mentioning that the game was at 9.20 last night. Amen to that. Uh, I Actually, if, if I ever were to work in or accept some sort of job in the central time zone, the – the simple fact that it's in the central time zone would have a major effect in my decision. Why can't these games start a little bit earlier? So I think that's a factor in the ratings as well. But is Tennessee responsible for this? I'd say about 75 or 80%. I, I would I would say Pat Summit is the penultimate person responsible for where the women's game is now. It's not even close. I think Gino Ariema would have been just fine showing up at the party and just cruising through, winning his championships. I don't think he, nearly as much as Pat Summit, cared to promote the entire game. And Pat Summit did. And that's why the game is where it's at, which makes it more difficult for Tennessee. But I don't believe Pat Summit would have it any other way. I agree. She was fighting for this in the 80s. She was begging for TV exposure. And she probably had... Look, I don't know how real they are, but I do believe there were some tangible opportunities for her to become the first women woman to coach in the men's game. And I think she never would have taken that job because I think she had a she had a personal goal to build up the women's game. By the way, had she wanted to take that job, that would have been great too. I'm not knocking that. Either one is fine, but you have to give her a certain level of respect to say, I want to build this up rather than take a job somewhere else. And she is, you can't, you can't take that away from her. And Tennessee had some of the original, should we say, kind of, even though I say they're still a little square, they had some of the players that started to make the game cool. I mean, Shamika Holesclaw was cool. Candace Parker is still cool. <laughs> you know, she's all over ESPN or CBS and analyzing the men's tournament. I mean, they had the type of players that brought a certain level of swag to the game that the game really needed. And I think that helped it. I'll tell you the one reason I didn't want her to ever take a men's job. Go ahead and click that like button. New people on board. Blake Topmeyer will join us shortly. And if you haven't subscribed, do so. The, the, the reason I didn't want Pat Summit to ever take a men's job, and I felt really strong about this. I want to remind everybody, crafttreats.com. Use the promo code off the hook. Promo code off the hook. Get 20% off. The chill pills with CBD in them that will help with your pet's digestive issues. Also arthritis or anxiety issues. And they've got non-CBD as well. Use the promo code off the hook. That's off the hook for 20% off. I thought it would open the door for it to be a circus. I thought that Pat Summit, the way she handles herself, probably would have been just fine. And it wouldn't have turned into a circus. But I thought there was at least the possibility that it could be some sort of circus for whatever woman took a man's job first in, in men's in men's basketball. I just thought there was the opportunity for that to happen. And already before she got sick, before she won her fifth national title, her legacy was so tied to women's basketball and was so special in a lot of different ways of being selfless to the game, to the sport. I didn't want to see that door even cracked open that you could say, yo, no wonder they got beat. Uh, you know, it's a women's coach for the men's team. Yeah, I just didn't even want that to be a possibility. Oh, I agree. That's my thoughts on always, you know, if somebody's working out in something and you have them try something else with your program, you don't want to see their legacy have to be tainted at all. Tennessee should know this firsthand, by the way. It's the same concept with, I don't know how you feel about this, Dave, but I never like seeing beloved players from a school become be hired to become that school's head coach because you run the massive risk of them hurting their legacy. I mean, Scott Johnny Frost. Majors is the prime example. There. Yeah. Scott Frost. Scott Frost. Yeah. Scott Frost, a big one. Larry Finch at Memphis. Penny Hardaway might have the same thing happen to him at Memphis. And it's like you're running a really big risk of like, okay, yeah, you're below. I mean, it happened to Holly Warlick. You know, it was really hard, I'm sure, to have to fire Holly Warlick. She was Pat Summit's right-hand woman for all of those national championships. She was the first All-American guard to play for Tennessee. But you had to fire her. You just had to. Okay, let me ask you this, then. Would Pat Summit, in a vacuum, not all the negative media publicity that she would have gotten, would she have had success coaching the men? And by success, 
I'm saying at least at least a Tom Izzo level where you're knocking on the door each and every year. Now Izzo does have one championship, but I'm I'm not I'm, let's take away the championship. You're just knocking on the door. You're a realistic team to win a championship because that's success at the men's level. Like a little bit more than Rick Barnes, a little bit less than Tom Izzo. Would she have been in that level? I think she would. I think she would have. I think largely she would have because there's such a pool in college basketball of talent that, yes, there would have been a lot of elite players that don't want to go play for a woman. But I think there would have been a few really elite players that are five stars that would have thought it really cool to go play for Pat Summit. Honestly. I think she would have won. I've always said this too. I think she would have won over moms. She would and, have. And, and a lot of these households, I think the moms would have been like, yeah, I'm going to do a little something different. And she's a proven coach. She's going to take care of, and, and whether she's male or female, she's going to take care of my son because she runs a strict program. I mean, I'll never forget you know, Candace Parker being up past curfew and they were playing in Chicago. She, Pat Summit, for those that don't know, always had this promise that she would play where you were from so uh, your your family and your friends could see you play in person without having to travel across the country. Well, she did that for Candace Parker, and Candace Parker was past curfew, and Candace Parker in her hometown game got suspended for half the game. I mean, Kayla, that's, <laughs> uh, that was pretty gutsy, but as a parent, that's exactly what I would want. Lay down the law. If they don't follow it, it's their fault. Yeah, and and look at Candace Parker now. It's like she she can't she always thinks of Pat. She you could tell she thinks of Pat Summit as a second mom almost because of how much love she has for Pat. And she would probably be the first to tell you that Pat was right to suspend her for that game. And um, I, I agree. I think that a lot of moms would want that. And a lot I, there would be some players that would want it too nowadays. You know, if, if this was 2000, I debate that there was still, you know, still a bit uh, maybe a lot of male players wouldn't want to do that in 2000, but nowadays where it's kind of cool to like the women's game, I think that there would be a, there would be a lot of interest in playing for Pat. And that's the thing. Co women's college basketball is still driven more by recruiting than anything else. If you're looking at the teams that are winning it, there's not, it's kind of where football was before the advent of the spread. Whereas, you know, this re recruiting outside of the triple option at Nebraska and the fun and gun at Florida recruiting drove who was good in the nineties more than anything else. And yep. Women's basketball is still at that level. Pat Summit won two national titles in 2007 and 2008 because she had Candace Parker. That, it's just that simple. And I think in the men's game, though, she would be able to recruit at that level. And that's why I think she would do well because she would land not everybody, but you only need a couple of high-profile transcendent five-stars in every class to be have a good program, and she would have those.